Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, Lily Nishmasi Mimirosi Rusmas Mordechai in Miami. We're going to start off with Capital Kuf Membez Luschos, the soldiers who are in operations right now as we speak. We're in America. They go through the night from 11 to 5, the best time to learn Torah. I know people that actually wake up in Eretz Yisrael in the middle of the night to learn through the night. Luschosam. I try to learn a little extra. Everybody here tries to learn a little extra. L'schus, those in captivity. L'schus, those who need a refuah shleimah b'karif, only 5,000, which is a huge, huge number. And uh, those who are nifter. So we're going to say, Kapitel Kuf Membeis together. Maskil l'david b'yaisai v'amaros v'ilo Koy li el adinoi ezo Koy li el adinoi ezhanon Eshpoich l'fanov sikhi tzorosi l'fanov agid Misatei falai ruchi v'ato yodato nusivosi Borach zu alech tom nufach li Habeit yominu rei v'ein li makir Ovad monois mimeni ein dureish l'nafshi Zoakti eilecho adinoi omar tiato machsi Chalki b'eretz ha'chaim Hakshivo rinosik naloi simyoid Cheers dedicated l'schus, all those I mentioned. Um, we'll go straight to email. Sorry, Mr. Shabbaton. Mayor Planker represented Toronto while I stayed back to organize Toronto. CM says, Ari Blau. This past Sunday. With lots of Seattle Shemai, the scene was absolutely amazing. There were over 250 people in Toronto across the city, who came together during this ace sar to fight back with a true demonstration of Achlos, Havi Yisrael and Havis HaToyro. One of the amazing things about the Fiyomi and MDY specially, specifically, specifically, is how it unites us. No matter where you are in the world, across every segment of Yiddishkeit, you'll find the Shir and people doing the Daf. The Daf literally connects us. It's very clear this past Sunday night as Toronto Seum, at the Toronto Seum, even though we may not have felt like celebrating, hundreds of people from across the city came together, shoulder to shoulder, united as one, to proudly declare Had bin Allah, we return to you, we return to you. They tried to take away our Simchas Torah, we fought back with our Simchas Torah. Thank you for driving the message of Havaz Yisrael daily and infusing Simcha every day into our Torah, truly making Kishmak to the Daf. Hopefully, we'll join you in, yeah, you in RBS next Siyum, coming Mashiach. And if not, we hope you join us in Toronto in person the next Siyum. With all our pictures from the Siyum, and a fantastic program, including participation from Rav Shlomo Miller Shlita. Very inspiring keynote by Rabbi Your Adler. All the best. Your Tommy Dim, Ari Blau, and Mayor Planko, MDY Toronto Reps. Here's some pictures. This is the Tsibor. Beautiful, nice food over there. And this is Mayor Planko all the way on the right. And Ari Blau with the hat and tie. Yeshur Koyach. This says, thank you so much for everything you're doing. I just finished Kiddush with MDY. Will Amir Hashem be my first time making a Siyum since my Shana Aleph? I would say, really like you to come here, give Shir here, quickly make a Siyum. The kids are okay. Shkoyach for inviting me. Thanks for the amazing opportunity to join such a beautiful and meaningful Shabbos. We're still on a high and full of emotions from the amazing Shabbos. This is just me putting, it was whatever. The, the email, I had to take different pieces, put them together. Two points regarding today's shir, and I skipped the first one. But another thing, if you can help me understand on Ahmed Aleph, I wanted to say this yesterday, but whatever. But he's right. Bar seems from Rashi that's only when it damages someone's property, but not a human. Which, as I understand, it seems so from your charge that the bar damages a human, the owner needs to pay the damages only when there's a dead, a human dead, it's meal from the past. In other words, when there's damage, Yichai, but when he's dead, not. Aslacha Rabba, Ari Hershkowitz, Monroe, New York. And then this guy says, the old bear, pile of hay is called a bale. That's the word I think I was looking for. No, haystack. I don't know. no, no, just a little 
a goddess, a little goddess. Thank you for giving the daf. May her squids. Thank you, letter. The Rebelli, I would like to share behind the scenes of my MDY, Moifas. Wednesday morning after the raffle for the Shabbaton, which I didn't win, I right away bought a ticket for the Muslim Shabbat Later that night, my wife told me, maybe send an email to Rebelli and perhaps you'll sponsor it for us. I played not. It's never, it's never going to happen. But then I said, I won't lose anything if I send an email. So my wife drafted up the email. I added my touch-ups and sent it. Thursday morning, I watched the share and you mentioned that someone from Chicago is coming for Shabbos. Then you said to someone from the audience, Yechiel, that was Yechiel Gordon. I said, Yechiel, you can do it also if you really wanted to. My first name is Yechiel. And it was a kiss from Hashem, as you call it. I sent the video to my wife and told her it's a sign from Hashem. She replied, yeah, yeah. But I was seriously ready to purchase things for Shabbos and Hashem will help cover the cost. My wife didn't agree to that plan, so I didn't. <laughs> Friday morning after I came home from diving, my wife accidentally checked my email, and she jumped up when she saw an email from Mark Ashkenazi that read, Call me ASAP. We have a sponsor. We are so excited. The rest is history. We had a beautiful Shabbos and enjoyed every second. We gained so much from the uplifting Shabbos. We'll never forget this experience. For whatever reason, Akash Baruch Hu gave me this thing. I said, this, I got a lot of emails from people. Can you please sponsor me? Please sponsor me. I have this problem. This problem. A lot of people wanted to come for free, obviously. This guy, he said he's a younger man in Kylo and whatever, so I threw it out there and Mark made it happen. I thank you for selecting my email out of so many others you received. I also want to thank Mark Ashkenazi, Kitzer. This is also a message to all my friends and the whole MDY family that you should never give up on anything, even though it seems impossible. You should never also, sh- and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read this line because it's going to hurt me. You should also never shy away from asking for help. If you really need it, I mean it. I should going to show you how. Uh, I went out of my comfort zone, he writes. I like this line. I went out of my comfort zone to write the email before Shabbos and signed off with my full name now, Yechil Chaim Meir Hershkowitz, because I spoke on Mosh Shabbos about coming out of your comfort zone. So he came out of his comfort zone. I was talking about bringing more people to the Daf and learning the Daf. When he took it to, the, to another place. Great. This is, um, what do you call these? A little um, rockets, Israeli ones that go in tanks. What are they called? Uh, uh, not mortars. rockets. Um, mortars. 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 Okay, mortars. Meloim de base ha medrish, mchubarim la toira, le regal tchilas mesechis babakama. Gary took a magic marker, Chayal took a magic marker. This is the covet. Those who do the dafyoimi, <laughs> it's your work, and off it goes and destroys some of the terrorists. Rabbi Salam Sechta is sponsored for the unity of Am Yisrael, the, the sponsor of the Chaydish. Haslach the Schuz of Meir Ben Rochel and Yidin Worldwide. Parnas al Chaydish number two. Lunishma Zachary Ben Moshe and Lunishma Zachary Bas Yosef. Parnas al Chaydish number three. Refor Shleim for the mother of Gershim Ben Moshe. Zoridaba, Bas, Miriam, I think. Brain intact. Yosef, if you if you hear this, maybe put in his name, her name. I mean, brain intact. Unleash your full potential. Should be zok the next solution. Tremendous success in all my endeavors. Paris Hayoy, Nochem Harvitz of official country. Nochem Harvitz of Baltimore, official country. Before Shlaim, my mother-in-law, Rivka Bas Hanya, and Shoshana Malka Bas Zahava Zlata Finder Zivik Bekaroy. Paris Hayoy. Wow, this is a long one. The definition was Chayes Sarah Bas Yehuda Leib Alevi. Sedowitz, whose yard said is today. She grew up near Ponovich, Lithuania, and was a paragon of Shemir's Halashen, and always had a kind word for everyone by her great grandson, Herz Chaim Levin. That's like a, a hint to me. He wants me to get back on the Shemir's Halashen, Yoimi, that should do, we should somehow incorporate it into the Shir. And I said, Miriam. Ah, okay, we're going to. Tell him, please, to send a message to Yosef to put this in because it's going to be in there for a whole month. So we need to, well, we'll try to remember. Double Devara Bas Sara. Sent. Parents Hayoim, Moshe Hech, the Schus Avram, Yaakov Ben Rochel, Leo being sentenced today. Yeshua's clarifying. Yeshua's Hashem clarifying. And the fifth sponsor, Lili Nishmas, Loichme Hayimam. Loichme Hayimam, Shinaflu. I guess he doesn't want me to say loichme. Lochme ayamam shenaflu bechav bet tishrei l'shmira al kol lochme ayamam b'piluyot shalem. Yes, Shmuel should keep everybody safe. As soon as I spoke, of course, um, three people, well, two chayalim and somebody got killed on Lebanon border. 
So we have to learn more Torah. I said that was two quiet days. I spoke too fast. Yosef and Chai is sorry for all the schusim that came that come from supporting Limud HaTayra. So Rabbi Yisai, we're here on Daf Avav Amit Beis, and so that's how it goes with Daf Yoimi. Before we know, we just started the Masechta already holding the Zion. We're holding seven lines from the bottom. Rabbi Kiva Oimer. We have a pasuk. Here's the pasuk. Meitav sodeyu umeitav karmi yishalim. Can see the chart. We had a machloikis yesterday between Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Kiva. B'denizik shayminon or b'demazik shayminon. And Yoshi redid the chart. He actually redid it. Then I asked him then to redo it, and I forgot. And by himself, he remembered. And this is the new and improved chart. Uh, okay. So. He, instead of doing yesterday, it was um, now it's vertical and it was horizontal yesterday. I think it's a lot better this way because you could see where they um, here. Check out this thing. The ziburis of the mazik is is worth as much as the idis of the nizik. In other words, he has Aza and Ahmad and Sabra, and the mazik has Sabra, the Chemish and Rishlai. So the worst of the mazik is as is, is good as the best of the nizik. So that we said yesterday, machlegs will be small. Oh, you got to be careful, tzaddik. So we have machlegs with the nizik shaminan, with the mazik shaminan. Rabbi Kiva says, with mazik shaminan. It's actually a chumrah, right? You can see it over here. Uh, they show that here. It's a chumrah because we're going with his best. Even though he only damaged Kfar Sabra, he has to give that guy his apartment in Yerushalayim. Okay. And Rebbe Kiva says, Leba Kosov, this pasuk, made of Sodehu. Sodehu, his field, the Mazik. Leba Kosov, 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 and certainly when it comes to Hegdish. Says the Gemara, what's that line? My Kosov, Leba Kosov, Leba Kosov, what does it mean? I have a Kosov, Leba 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 Kosov, If you tell me that the axe, a regular private citizen's axe, the damage to a uh, bull that's owned by Hegdish. Goes like this, Rabbi Yisai, here. Here, uh, uh. here we go. You ready? Boom. So if the citizen, the, the, the civilian bull hit the Hegdish bull, Kavah Choymer, that what? You'd have to pay. Well, Shoreyeyu Amar Achmona, Veloy Shoshir Hegdish. Here's the positive. Your friend's axe. So the Eben Ezra, very interesting. Eben Ezra brings someone by the name of Ben Zuta who learned an upshot in this positive, not like the Gemara. Not your friend, but rather the bull damaged his friend. The bull had a friend. He damaged his friend. So the Evan Ezra says, bulls don't have friends. The only friends they have is Ben Zuta. That's what he writes about Ben Zuta. Anyway, so it goes like this. So it cannot be that Rabbi Kiva said that if you damage Hegdish, you have to pay. Isn't it a Mephur Shapazak? If you damage Hegdish, you do not pay. Ella must be something else. If somebody promises a hundred to the Beis Hamikdash, comes the guy by Tzdaka and collects, he collects from the best. Says Gemara, but that can't be loyal Balchayv. He shouldn't be any better, any worse, any better than a Balchayv. Balchayv When it comes to a, lo- a-, a loan, you only collect from the, med- the-, the medium one. You have three fields. You have uh, Sabra, Yushalayim, Bet Shemesh. You get Bet Shemesh. So why should Hegdish be any better? Maybe he'll say that Rebbe Kiva holds. Let's just say, for whatever reason, Rebbe Kiva holds that when it comes to Balchayv, it's like a, a mazik, and you have to pay from the best. So, based on English also, but it's still different. There's halacha when it comes to Hegdish, that when you damage Hegdish, you don't have to pay. So, how can you compare Hegdish 
to, to civilian, to regular citizens. There's no comparison. There's no comparison. There's no reason to say that if you promise money to the Beis Hamikdash, you have to pay with Yiddish. You can't connect that to Nizakin because when you mazik a person, you pay Yiddish. When you mazik Beis Hamikdash, you don't pay Yiddish. So just because I promised money to Beis Hamikdash, why would I have to pay Yiddish? Beis Hamikdash and people are very different. Says Gemara, let's go back to the original answer. The civilian bull damaged the Beis Hamikdash bull. And you ask me, but it's a Mephurish Apostle that says, you shouldn't have to pay. Here's the chart. And it's very, very simple. Rav Shimon Manasseh takes the word Reyeyu that we were learning up until now, yeah? Reyeyu. And he says, it doesn't mean that if you damage Hegdish, you don't have to pay at all. What it means is that if you damage Hegdish, there's no difference between a Tam and a Muad, right? Until now, when you damage your friend, Karen, you gore your friend, your, your friend's bull gores your, your bull, there's a difference between if he did it three times or four times. The difference, tamut. Not when it comes to hegdish. The opposite. He learns that hegdish is more chomer. Before we thought that hegdish is less chomer. You don't have to pay at all. Now we're saying not only do you have to pay, but you don't get this this position of fifty percent. There's no fifty percent discount. No discounts when it comes to hegdish. You pay one hundred percent. Why? Because reyeu. The discount is only when you damage your friend, but when you damage Hakadosh Baruch stuff. The base means there's no discount. So that's what he's saying. Kolchkin. Now says Rabbi Kiva, if when you pay your friend, you pay from the best of the best. So certainly when you pay Hegdish, where there's no discount, Kolchkin, you have to pay from the best of the best. That's the Kavah Chaim. Says the Gemara, I don't like your Pshat. Yachi. I have a few problems with it. Right now we have one. Rebbe Kiva and Rebbe Shmuel argue. We had the chart. Here we go through this for a second. Did all sorts of stuff. No. I don't even know. Okay. We'll just fight. Before we said, right? Question. The, do you go based on the Mazik's property? Do you go based on the Nizik's property? Who told you that's the Machalik between Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Kiva? Might be this the Nizik's Zibur, the Mazik Ligi. Perhaps everybody agrees that you go Likula, that you go by, let's just find it again. So I know it's in there somewhere here. <clears throat> Maybe we say, but the Nizik Shaminon. In other words, you take his best. His best is Kfar Sabra, and the Mazik's worst is Kfar Sabra. He could get away with only paying Kfar Sabra. What is that? That's a Kula, not a Khumra. He, he could pay with his least valuable property. Perhaps everybody agrees to that. Even Rabbi Kiva might agree to that. Okay, so then what's the Machlaikis? Machlaikis is what we just said. Rabbi Kiva saw Now what? That if you Mazik Hegdish, you have to pay. That if you damage Hegdish, you don't have to pay. But everybody's going to hold. So maybe perhaps the Soma we spoke about at the end of the year yesterday, beginning of the year today, is out the window. So the Gemara says, I have three rights that that can be. We start out the whole sugyo that says, No, that Pasuk doesn't mean what you said, it means what I say. It's not true. So if the machloikis that fits if bidin mazik shemina and bidinizik shemina, made of sadeo means his best field the mazik shemina. But you're telling me a completely different thing. You're telling me it's talking about hegdish and if you have to pay hegdish, not pay hegdish. What does it have to do with the made of sadeo? Has nothing to do with the pasuk. Void my kavachomer, my kavachomer hegdish. We just said we just established that perhaps everybody agrees nizik shemina. What's nizik shemina? A kula or a chumra? A kula. You pay your least valuable property. Here, if you look at the chart. The, the, the mazik has Yushalayim, Bet Shemesh. He doesn't have to pay that. 
He pays the, his worst property. That's a massive kula. Take that kula, and I'm going to make a big havachimer. Oh, if he only has to pay his worst property, so certainly by hegdish. That's not a good havachimer. Havachimer works. If he has to pay his best, best property, he has to pay Yerushalayim, so certainly by hegdish. That makes sense. You don't take a kula, say, oh, if he keeps him chal Shabbos, so certainly uh, the other guy can, you, you know, that's not a kavachimer. Kavachimer is you take the a chamer, something chamer, and say that certainly by hegdish it should also be like that. Void. And here's the biggest question. Why? Because you're trying to say that they don't, they don't argue in Bidinizik Shaminan and Bidimazik Shaminan in this chart. There's no argument. And we have a Mufurshu price that says that they do argue in it. And that's a checkmate. Horavashi. It says Mufurish in the Braiso. Made of Sadeu, who made of Karmi Shalim. Made of Sadeu Shel Nizik. Who made of Karmi Shel Nizik. The Rabbi Shmal. Rabbi Shmal holds Bidin Nizik Shaminon. Rabbi Kivaimer. Made of Sadeu Shemazik. Made of Karmi Shemazik. Bidin Mazik Shaminon. Mufurish of Braiso that they do argue in that. End of story. Rami Lea Baila Rovo. So Abai has a big question. And that's basically going to take us for a big part of the Sugya today. Ksiv meitav sodeyu u meitav karmoy yishalem. This is the pasuk we're familiar with. We, we, that's how we started today with this pasuk. That if you damage your friend's field, you have to pay from the best sada, from the best vineyard. Meitav in midachrin eloi. You pay from the best. What if I don't want to pay from the best? What if I want to pay with a car? Can I pay with a car? Depends. I guess if it's a Lamborghini or whatever, but that's be good. Meitav. So, Rabbi Sai, you all know the answer to this because I said it twice already. And this is the end of the sugya, and it's so poshut, but the Gemara is going to have to go through all the steps to get there. That what? That when it comes to real estate, then you pay with the best. But when it comes to any other item, computers, books, whatever it is, food. You don't have to give the best. Shove a kasif, get kasif. I can give cash, and I can give items. I'm going to pay real estate, then you have to pay from the best of the best. That's the mascara, that's the end of the sugya. How do we get there? It goes like this. It's a bunch of steps. So let's just see the psukim for a second. Here. Here's, uh, here's the second pasuk. The first pasuk is Meitav Sodehu. You see in red, Meitav Sodehu, you should pay with the best. When it comes to fields, pay the best. But we have a pasuk that says, check this out. You have to see this pasuk inside. Baal Habar Yishalem Kesef Yoshiv Lebaalav Amesi Eloi. You know what the Torah could have said? Everything besides the red word. Let's read it together. Baal Habar Yishalem. If somebody falls into the pit, an animal falls into the pit, the owner of the pit should pay. Yishalim Kesef, you should pay money Lebalav to, to, the, to the guy that owns the animal. Why do you need the word Yashiv? What does Yashiv mean? So the Gemara says, Yashiv, it's actual word to teach you Shava Kesef, something that has value. You see this? This is worth money, especially now. Right now, I'm very thirsty. So it has value. So you can pay with this. Vafilu Subin. Even with. What do they call that cereal in the morning? Bran. 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 Imagine I lend you $1,000. You are a big jerk. I didn't want to lend you $1,000, but you forced me into it. You, you gave me a guilt trip, so I give you $1,000. And when the 30 days come up, you show up with 400 pounds of bran. Shalom Aleichem. Here I am. It says, it says in the entire Yashiv. So every single day for the next 400 years, I could put one scoop of bread into my yogurt, and I'm good. And he's Yaitza. He's Yaitza. So it's interesting. In Babashi of Tzadik Chaz, it says that the lightest thing that there is, is bran, suben. So the Mashah explains over there that whoever uses bran to pay back, even though it's mutter, he's a kaldas. In other words, he has no akar satayv. Guy went out of his way and he gave you a loan. This is how you pay him back. Disgusting. There was a, a true, there's a true story. I'm not going to say the name of the yeshiva. I know where it was. Uh, a guy burnt a hole in his friend's suit jacket. So his friend was upset at him, naturally. 
built, burned it with a cigarette. So the friend said, you owe me money? He says, okay. He goes to Meshgiach, he says, Meshgiach, you see this egg that you give in the morning? Is it mine? Can I be Mekadosh, a woman with it? So Meshgiach says, yeah. So every day, this jerk went to the guy with the suit and says, here's an egg. It's my money. Here's an egg. You have to take it. And after like a year and a half, he said, I paid you off. And the Rabbanim said, uh, halachically, maybe technically, but he's a bad guy. Fine. Um, I do want to show you this picture that I found on the internet. Where is it? Oh. I guess before I show you the picture, I'll show you this. This, Rabbi says, this has nothing to do with this at all. But I'll show you the picture in a second. So, I said the story a number of times. I have a, a very, very close friend. His name is Rabbi Yehuda Freilich. And we have a big argument throughout Shas. So what's more important, Taira or Chesed? He's a big Baal Chesed. That's what he does. He does a lot of Chesedim. When he drives from here to there in Bechem, she stops every two minutes, picks up all these Yushami guys and whoever needs a tram. You know, that's his thing. So, not, you know, so I said over the story about Rabbi Yehuda that he was Mekhari of a lot of people in Chicago. He had an organization. He started an organization called Israel Link. And he's basically Mekhari of Israelis. And they, he gets a phone call from the mikvah. He's like, one of your guys just drove up here on Shabbos. He's going to the mikvah. So Rabbi Yehuda explained to them that this guy was not, a, not affiliated. And he accepted upon himself to go to the mikvah. And he didn't realize, you know, he said, Kabbalah is Kabbalah, he didn't chap, Shab is not Shab, and he drove there. That being said, I want to show you this clip that he sent me today. I'm going to share with you a crazy, crazy story. You can make it louder. So we're continuing to give out tzitzis to chayalim, and a guy calls me up and he says, I'm going to the army bases, and um, I'm going to pick up tzitzis. And I this say, is review of the frailer. Sure, come. He comes, I want to introduce you to him. This guy, his name is Yoav. Last time I met Yoav was in Chicago. 20 years ago, he used to come to my Torah classes. He looked a little bit different. Could you believe it, how Hashem surrounds things, that 20 years after Yoav comes up to pick up the tzitzis, comes here with a long beard, I recognize him, and unbelievable, doing mitzvahs together, how the tzitzis ties everyone together and brings back new ties into life. Yoav! Wow. Keep up your great work. Amazing. Basically, they were giving out tzitzis to Chaylim, and he called up you. They didn't know that he didn't know that he knows him. He says, "Listen, I, I, I want to volunteer and bring boxes up to the Chaylim." And then he met him. He says, "What's your name?" And he told he told him his name. He's the guy from the mikvah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't say his last name. Here he is. Look at this. Look at this picture. This is what he looks like today. See Mendel <laughs> going to the mikvah. <laughs> He's going to the mikvah. How did spoon him? Anyway. So Rabbi Yehuda is the one that introduced me to, I went over to Rabbi Yehuda. He has a company called Outsourcing to Israel. He's very good at bringing people, the people, companies in America, they use his services as people in, in Eretz Yisrael and in South Africa. A lot of people for qualified people for a lot less than in America. So if you have like, you know, computer companies, anything you need. So I said, I'm looking for an artist. Do you have something? And he introduced me to Yoshi. So now I went to him now and I said, Yoshi was amazing. Now I need a 3D guy. So he introduced me to the new 3D guy. That was it. So, Rabbi Yisai, that's a uh, review the frail for you. So, here we are. That being said, man pays nearly $3,000 bill using <laughs> four, four wheelbarrows. I saw the other pictures. Four wheelbarrows worth uh, full of pennies. There's a video of him just walking in. like, what? And they had to sit there and count each one by hand. I think it was... I do the math, but it's like 280,000 pennies or something. Does that make sense? It's 300,000. But it was, no, no, no. But because nearly, see, nearly. So it's 280. Anyway, <clears throat> fine. The point is that if you want, you just pay uh, with Subin, not pennies, pennies, mamish kesef. But it's certainly not metaf kesef, it's really poor kesef. And you can pay with you can pay with bread. So Abaya has a big contradiction. On the one hand, it says meta, the best of the best. On the other hand, it says you can pay with bread. Which one is it? So we're gonna go through a number of answers. Till we finally reach the answer that we know, which is 
that when it comes to real estate, it has to be the best of the best. But when it comes to everything else, you could give even suba. Says the Gemara, Loi Kashio, Kami Daitoi Kan Bal Korchoi. If you give yourself up and you say, okay, I want to pay, then good, you can pay with bread. But if the guy has to drag you into court, into Besden, and they force you to pay, then you're going to have to pay with the best of the best. Omar Ulo, Bereder of Eloi, the Ekonami, the Ktani, the Ksiv, Yishalem, the word Yishalem, for some reason means Bal Korchoi. He shall pay. We're going to force him to pay. Only Abai Miksiv Yishulam. That he's forced, you shall him. He feels like paying ksiv. Medaidai mashma. Hello, Rabbi, I have another shot. Kidamar. Like my Rebbe Rabbo. The sign you have to you low, you bought him a solace of chrome, and he might say, Lamachron, Machil and Oisin, Meister Oni, Ad Mechza. Ooh, I wanted to put in the Meister Oni chart for the new guys that have never seen it, but I'll spare you guys. Baruch Hashem, I forgot for you. Okay, so we'll go straight into the halacha. It goes like this. This chart is, comes over and over. Where's that other chart I'm looking for? Here. See that? Boom. We can do it again. Basically, if a poor person doesn't have 200 zuz to his name, he's considered poor, and he could get maizirani. He could get, when you, have to, when you have produce, years three and six, you have to take 10% to give to the poor. Only years three and six from your produce. Let's say he has 175 zuz. This was the sugya. I'll just remind you that there's a bad guy. He's a tzaddik. He's, a, he's actually a rasha. He pretends he's a tzaddik. Why? Because he gets this guy good. He gives him that extra buck. Here he is. So now his thermometer or whatever it is fills up. And he's not on it anymore. Now he's 200. You can't give him anymore. Halachically, if he has 175, Rashi brings it right here on the sugya. If he has 175, you're allowed to give him 1,000. Even though it's going to bring him above the, what is it called? Threshold. The, even taxes, it's called the threshold? Okay, the threshold. Bracket, like that. Bracket, yeah, the bracket. bracket. That's the word. Thank you. Thank you. I knew this. The bracket. Even if it pushes him over, he's not in the honey bracket anymore. He's already in the, he's a big usher. But you're allowed to give him a thousand on the spot. So check this out. This guy has real estate. He inherited real estate. It's worth 200. So he's not, he's not eligible for Maiserani, for Tzedakah money. The problem is he can't find anybody to sell it, to, to sell to. So we're, we're able to give him, we're able to give him Maiser up to half, meaning up to 100. So let's say he can't sell it for, let's say he could get 175 for it, so we could give him 25. If he, if he could sell it for 150, we give him 50. But if he, and if he could sell it for 100, 100. But if he could sell it for 50, we do not give him 150. The most we give him is 100. Interesting shayla that I saw. This is going to trip everybody up. Or because I said that, so you're going to say the opposite. There's a guy, a a guy wanted to buy the apartment he was renting. So he goes to the, his landlord. He says, how much you want? The guy says some crazy price. The guy puts it on the market. Now, the renter is very upset. He wants to buy the apartment, but it's too expensive. He thinks he's not being fair. So every time somebody, a potential buyer comes to buy the apartment, he sends his kid out to play with the neighbor's dog. And the dog says barking, barking. So they say, yeah, you know what? I'm not interested in a neighbor with a dog. Is that okay or not okay? Halachically, is that the Seder? So you would think it's not okay. Rizim Shem for some reason said it's fine. He said it's not a problem. I just thought it's interesting. He can't sell his house. It fits in somehow. Says the Gemara like this. Vavi Bomar and my, my Rebbe, Rabbi, asked the question, what exactly went, went on here? If real estate prices tanked in the whole area, with the day, Nami Zolba Hadayu and his also, then he didn't do anything wrong. He's not a Bishaya. So give him more than 100. Why are you stopping it at 100? Those all the Kulam and Nami, everybody lost. Hello, Doi Garis the Kulam. You know what happened? Everybody's went up. They, I did the Isle of Anofik Azuze, Zolare. You know, he's very, very bad at this. He, does, he, he gives away his, uh, his cards. He needs money desperately and let them know. So everybody, they're not going to give him full price. They know not to pay him. The full price. He himself caused that his land 
should go down. So you know what Taisu says? If you look over here, Taisu says, he's considered a Peshaya. He's a Peshaya. You cause it to yourself. Taisu is the bottom one, the Yakur, top line. He caused it himself. I think we, we from this Maisa, we can know who started Corona. There, there's a guy in Israel who bought a, a piece of land, and they kind of fooled him into buying it. He bought it. He thought he was going to make a big knock. After he bought it, he found out very quickly that there's no developing this land. Nobody's going to be able to develop it for the next 20 years. So that was it. So he did some sort of hijibiji, some zgulas and stuff. And, uh, and all of a sudden, Corona hit. And his next door neighbor was a hall, and they needed a place to do outdoor weddings, whatever, and they paid him a lot more than he bought it for. So now I was thinking that this guy probably started Corona. <laughs> corona started because of him. I says the like this. He's a zolari. He doesn't know how to do business. He made his own property go down in value because he's desperate for money. So don't give him anything. Why are you giving him a hundred? He's Poshaya. So Rabbi said, There's a guy here in Miami, I know very well, but he used to live in Chicago. And he had a beautiful sports car, like convertible sports car in, in, in the summer. But in Chicago, you know, in the winter, they're worthless. So then they used to, it was a special lease. They're giving like a Range Rover in the winter. And he was given the, I think he had an NSX back then. It was a crazy car, whatever. Trying to say that sometimes if you try to uh, buy a sports car, Lamborghini in Chicago in the winter, you probably get a very good deal. There's no market for it. Who's going to drive around the snow? So there's certain things that the market drops, including real estate. There's ups, there's downs, different seasons. So what happened was everybody knows that in Nissan, it's very expensive. Land is expensive. You can plant them. We have in Tishrei, Zal Arisa, it says also, has to do with rentals, etc. So in Tishrei, it's very, in, in the winter, it's much cheaper. People don't rent in the winter. Yeah, we have Bayas also. This season's the season that people move, usually in the summer. Winter is kind of dead. The Kuli Alma, Nadra, Nisan, Umizabni. Most normal people, they're not going to sell at a discount. They're going to wait it out until the summer. But he's desperate for money. So this is very interesting. Allah also, I saw they discuss and they try to bring rice from him here. Could you say, like uh, somebody sent me a clip that um, land in Aziz is worth a lot of money because Bezor Hashem, Mashiach is coming and we're going to beat them and we're going to go all the way to the sea, the whole thing. Okay. Do we value it as, as today or we value it as in a month? Today, right now, it's not worth much. How do you look at it? Mars says over here, perhaps you could look at it in a way where it's going to be in the future. Most people don't sell now. People sell then. It's not going to drop 50, more than 50%. So that's why we give him, we give him right now the um, 100 Fifty percent of what it, what it's worth. Now he has two hundred. He'll drop to a hundred. Let's give him a hundred, but no more. Now we could explain Abai's question. Abai's question was: What's the difference between Meitav and Yashiv? Sometimes you have to give the best of the best, and yet sometimes you can pay with brand. So he says, the Meitav. It comes to Nizaki, you have to pay with the best. You have Libaninis, Fe Purta. Let's say he has an adjoining field. He owns a field right here. So he says, Yeah, yeah, you know, on the water, it's a lot better. So it's a lot more expensive. But I live over here. I don't want on the water. I don't want two properties. I want right here. But it's not, not valued as much. He wants a lower value property, I, obviously a larger property that equals the same amount as in the better place. So, the Omali, you have the Bainanist, Fay Purta, give me a medium type of property, but a larger piece. Omali, so the guy tells him, the Mazik tells him, Yishaklis Kadinah, 
if you take what you're supposed to get, which is either shkol kedahashta, then you take today's value. Viloi shokel kiyukra adil kamei. But if you're going to go to the bainanis, I'm going to give it to you what it's going to be worth in the future. You hear what's going on here? He's getting less value today. If you're going to go with it, this, so that's what he says. You ask me a question. Why does the Pazik say metav and bran? Depends. If you go, if you take your idis, you're going to get the best value. First of all, it's very high valued real estate. But second of all, you're going to get the full value. Today's value. You're not, you don't have to wait until Nissan for it to go up. Today's value. Instead of getting one apartment in Yushalayim, you're going to get two apartments in Yushalayim. Then you're going to wait it out until Nissan. It's going to be worth four apartments. But if you want to take Bainanis for whatever reason, you don't want Yushalayim. You want Miami. So the value of Miami is, let's say, less. So he's going to say, I'm not going to give you a full apartment in Miami. I'm going to give you what Miami is worth in the summer when all the tourists come. That's when I, whatever they, in the winter. In the winter. Sorry, sorry I'm on it. Not in the summer, it's 137 degrees. Today was 80 degrees. Rabbi Sai, I didn't realize. Yesterday I was a fool. I learned inside the entire day. I didn't go out even for one minute. So Today, I didn't leave. I sat in that seat the entire day. I didn't realize it was 80 degrees. I had a fan over me. It was beautiful. Out of the sun. Beautiful. There's actually a slight wind pushing the paint. It was muddy. Okay. So, you hear what's going on here? But you don't get full value. You're not getting... If you cause a million-dollar damage in Miami, he's, he's going to give you an apartment that's worth $500,000 in Miami. Why? Because in the winter, in one more month from now, it's going to be worth a million. But if he's going to give you the top penthouse in Miami, then he's going to give you the full million dollars in a penthouse right now. And you don't have to wait to the winter. What's up, Shah? So the Gemara asks, it doesn't make any sense. What you're doing doesn't make any sense. If a guy decides, yeah, let's even talk about Miami. You have a simple apartment or apartment building, and then you have a penthouse. That's idis. Let's call that idis. So if I pay with the penthouse, I have to pay full price. I have to give him, if he damaged a million, the damager has to pay a million dollar penthouse. But if he decides to go to the third floor, a weaker floor, he, on his own, the damaged guy says, I don't want penthouse. I want third floor. Give me two apartments on the third floor. He'll say, you're not getting two apartments on the third floor. You're getting one apartment on the third floor because in a few months from now, that one apartment is going to double in value. Why is that fair? (laughs) We're saying that you have to pay the top of the top for the benefit of the person that got damaged. So if he chose to take a lesser amount, a lesser value, why should it, why should we knock him? Doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, you see the question. Mm-hmm. You made it worse for the guy that got damaged when he takes a bainanis and a ziburis. The Rahman Omar Metab, the tire said you should give him from the best, but Amr's me bainanis, viziburis, nami loy, or loy. You're telling me that if he takes the medium or the worst, you, we don't treat him so nicely. He has to wait it out. Okay, you're right. We're not going to compare it to this. We're going to compare it to something else. Somebody owes money. Same idea. We're going to do this three times. We, we say that similar to somebody owes money. What's that? If I borrow money and I want to pay back with real estate, I only have to pay back with the mediocre one, not with the best. What if the lender says, I don't want the medium one, I want the worst. Why does he want the worst, Rabbi Isai? Because it makes sense to him. He has a warehouse over there in that bad neighborhood, and he wants another warehouse in that bad neighborhood. Whatever the reason is, sometimes people want stuff in not such great neighbors. Why? Because it makes more sense for them. It's closer to their house. Whatever the reason is. So the, the, Rashi says this, not me. Again, and I'm, I have to reiterate this. Just because it's a bad neighborhood doesn't mean it's not worth a million dollars. In the good neighborhood, you get 200 square feet in a penthouse. In the bad neighborhood, you get 
200,000 square feet of warehouse. But you're getting the value. You're getting a million dollars. It's just in a bad neighborhood. So he tells him, if you're going to take the best of the best, you're going to take the penthouse, then take what the value is right now in today's real estate market today. We're going to call up the agent. Is this worth a million dollars? He's going to say, yes, take it. If the real estate agent says, no, it dropped a little bit. We have to wait until the winter comes and it's really, really snowy in New York. Then it's going to go up in value. No, no, no. He doesn't have to wait it out. You have to give him today. You lie. But if you don't take the penthouse, you take the warehouse. Shokil kiyukur de la then I could give him a warehouse that even though today it's not worth a million dollars, it'll be worth a million dollars in the winter. Masculine Ravacha Brady Ravika. So Ravacha asks, okay, you know how that does make me love him. People are not going to want to lend money. because he doesn't. Either have a lizuzo, have a the hashto. One of the biggest things in real estate. I remember then, it's like, wow, I wish I had some liquid cash in 2008 when everything. Remember, Miami was in the pits. You could buy buildings here. Remember? Empty Trump buildings. I remember. You could have bought everything then. So the trick is to save some money on the side for, for when it drops. Because real estate does drop. The cycles. So the guy tells him, it doesn't make any sense. I had cash. And I did you a big favor and I lent you a million dollars cash. So I have to suffer now? I have to get a property and I have to wait it out. If I had my cash in my pocket, I'll buy anything I want. I'll buy the good stuff, the, whatever I want. Why, do, why, why are you allowed to pay me something that's, that's not even worth what I gave you? And I have to wait it out. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not going to lend money anymore. And because you have my cash, I have to, I'm going to be forced to take something and wait it out to the future? Okay, you're right. It's not compared to Nezek. It's not compared to Chayv. We're going to compare it to Akshuba. And it's interesting because that's how the Soga ends today with those three, those three uh, types of payments. You only have to pay your wife Akshuba, the 200 or whatever is in the Ksuba, from the worst of the worst. And if she says, give me something better, this is different than the other two cases, because before we were saying, give me something worse. Now she's at the worst level, so she wants something better. She's at the Ziburis level. So he only has to pay Ziburis. So she's going to do me a favor, give me something better. Oh my Lord, and he tells her, if you take what you are, um, Entitled, thank you. If you take what you're entitled to take, take what it's worth right now. If you want the bainanis, then take the bainanis as it's going to be worth in a few months. But the bottom line is, with this pshad, we still don't have a good pshad in Abaya. Abaya's question is, on the one hand, we say that you pay... A mazik pays the best of the best. On the other hand, you say he could pay him with 400 pounds of bran. Which one is it? Omarova called the Yavle, me metav le sivle. Says Rava, the Torah says metav, so deyu. Anything you pay. If you pay bran, grade A, not grade B. It has to be the best of the best. You pay a car, brand new, not a jalopy. You pay real estate, the best. That's what he says. So the Gemara. Well, made so day hooks it. It talks about real estate. It doesn't talk about brand. And this is it. This is the final pshat. For sure, they explained it. Everything in the world is considered meta, even brand. You give me pennies, I'm going to take the pennies. We're going to go to the bank and we're going to get cash from it. Give me brand, I'm going to go back. A guy in Ramabit Shemesh was paid. I don't know where the guy that paid him. Paid him with a f- truckload, a truckload of toilet paper. He had a toilet, he had a truck come, show up to the guy's house. He pushed it out the truck and said, this is yours. Now, Midir Aisa, he was Yaitza. He paid his chayv. Now, the guy, wow, hold on. Oh, 
Do we still have? Oh, we're still live. We still it's just. My thing is. All right, we're almost done anyway. This did happen in Chicago once. It's the timer. Geschmack. And this is going to be the, uh, <laughs> the thumbnail. <laughs> okay. We're almost good. Here, let's just finish up here. What was that Mill saying? I don't even know. Oh, so the bottom line is that uh, I don't even need this, right? The bottom line is that Shavik Kesev Kesev, anything has value anywhere. Uh, with the thing with the toilet paper, you probably call up the toilet paper company and say, come pick it up, take it back. They'll, they'll t- obviously, you're going to lose a little money. He was paid $1,000 worth of toilet paper. He'll make back uh, 800 whatever it is. He's going to take a hit. The bottom line is the guy's yikes. The bar ma'ara besides real estate, the lace of lemeitav give him the best of the best. Kech the likvis alazvina, so that people should buy it. That there should be buyers for it. Let's say he gave him uh, twenty acres in in Gaza right now. Nobody's gonna buy it from him. So it has to be something that people buy. Can you, can you, know, can you make the tani when he lends the money that only accept cash back? Yeah, why not? I think so. So, a tenai is a tenai. I could also make a tenai that you do 400 jumping jacks if you want my money. That's a condition. Condition is a condition. Yeah, we're talking about there's no condition. When we evaluate the, the property, is this a it? This is, this is a ziburis. Do we decide that? Do we go based on the mazik? What's the Gemara's question? I'll leave it to Rabbi Shmuel. I'll explain when we get to, to the thing. When it comes to Rabbi Shmuel, there's no question at all, because it always goes by the Nizak. Great. Keep the Bailach, I'll leave it to Rabbi Kiva. The Mazik Shemin, according to Rabbi Kiva, it says that we go with the damager, Mai. Made of Sadeh Omar Chaman Alamute, the Nizak. His best field means that it, to exclude that of the Nizak. Maybe it means that you have to give the best of the Mazik. Is it the best of the Mazik? Or it's compared to the best of the nizik. So let's say this is not considered good stuff in the world. So you can't pay with his ziburis, even though it's same as the nizik's. But if it's considered, if his ziburis is considered this in the world, maybe he could pay. You hear? It's very possible that this guy, right, Bill Gates, his Ziburis is the top of the top. He doesn't have Ziburis that we know of. He has this, he has a $200 million house, $100 million house, and a $50 million house. But his $50 million house is not Ziburis, it's his Ziburis. So does Bill Gates have to give his $200 million house? The Torah says his best. Or no, it goes based on the world. So his $50 million house, which is just as good as your uh, this, maybe that's enough. Says the Gemara, believe it or not, Bill Gates is going to have to pay from his best. Because that's what the Torah says. Omar Rechman, Omar made of Sadehu, Bill Gates' best field. What connection is it to the world? Your best. That's it. What time is it? Um, okay, fine. We'll stop. We'll stop over here. It's a, it's, 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 it's a long sugi that goes into here anyway. So we'll just stop over here. A boy say. Have a wonderful day tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, Be'ez Hashem, and Friday at 2. Matzah Shabbos, 9. Oh, we have listings in there.